Okay, I want to ask this question now. Like, what what person is a government run by a business? Like, wh- how much does business have its effects on a government? Um. Well, so most governments in the world are democracies. <laughs> okay. Okay. And a standard liter. I mean, obviously, one way government businesses can try to influence government is by donating money, paying mm-hmm. money to mm-hmm. candidates to influence their policies. Um, it, the standard literature on campaign donations is they have very little effect. <laughs> In fact, it's actually really hard to buy policies. Now, but, but the more subtler point is the following. On any policy issue that the public notices and has an opinion on, public wins. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. public gets mm-hmm. their way regarding mm-hmm. policies the public can notice and attend to. Where other forces have their power is behind the scenes on things public doesn't even notice. When there's a topic the public can't even be bothered to think about or understand, it's too obscure, too technical, then politicians are wondering what to do and other people can come in and have a voice with them and influence them. But the main influence is usually in terms of expertise about the technical details. They say, look, you could really screw this up if you if you get the technical details wrong and the public doesn't seem to care. But I know a lot of these technical details. So if you listen to me, I can help you work out the details so you don't screw it up. And politicians are persuaded by that correctly, like you would be if you were in their role, because they just they do not want to screw it up. They do not <laughs> want to be famous for the guy who screwed something up and gets the public attention. And so they listen a lot to firms and their experts behind the scenes because mm-hmm. They credibly do know a lot about the details. So that ability to get their ear on the details does give them some powers on the margin to push them one way or another when politician doesn't notice, the public doesn't notice, and they want it to go one way or another. That's the fact of political influence in democracy in the modern world. Two main Mm -hmm. channels. When the public has an opinion, they get what they want. (laughs) And when the public doesn't care, but there's some technical complexity, the politicians are afraid of screwing up. And politicians listen to technical experts, which are usually, you know, aligned with mm-hmm. the companies who make stuff. Uh, that's how our world works. So, um, Is that happening a lot? Th- this has been happening for, you know, a century at least. This is how our democratic world works and has worked for a long time. If you want to talk about how we could make it work better, I'm happy to have that conversation. But at least the important thing is to understand how it works now. And it doesn't work too bad now. Um, now, fundamentally, when the public gets what they want, they often screw things up. I mean, the public doesn't use doesn't always understand. Uh, so, for example, if the public wanted to break up Facebook or Twitter or something right now, they if they had that opinion strong enough, well, they could get their way. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean they'd like what happened as a result. <laughs> they may not understand very well the consequences of what they want, but they would still get what they want. And mm-hmm. partly that makes the public a little wary about demanding things because they know they don't know that much about the consequences of their actions. Who, sh- who should be in charge of calling the shots? Because everything, almost everything in our nature follows the bell curve and even human IQ or, or, or it's, it's kind of a natural law. So even if it's for decision making, who do you think should call the shots? D- definitely democracy is giving the power to give call the shots for everyone, but who do you think should call the shots? Well, I think you want to separate out the values and the facts. So decision theory, standard decision theory, says that decisions are made on the basis of values, i.e. preferences over outcomes, and beliefs, i.e. distributions over states of the world. What's the world like? So you want your decisions to have be trying to achieve good values, but also be informed by, you know, a lot of knowledge and information about the facts. That's what we want fundamentally. So now, unfortunately, if you just are going to pick a person, some people you could pick, you might trust their values and other people you could pick, you might trust their knowledge of the facts. And now if you just have to pick one person, you have to make a trade-off here, someone who you trust enough about the values, but also hopefully you Mm. trust enough to sort of get access to the facts. But a better system is just to separate these two parts of governance, just have separate parts of governance about the values and the facts. And this is the basis of my proposal for a form of government called Futarchy, whose slogan is vote on values, but bet on beliefs. 
<laughs> okay. So in my proposal, we have betting markets whose job is to aggregate beliefs about the facts, about the mm -hmm. consequences mm -hmm. of policies. And we have a separate mechanism for aggregating values, something more like a democracy, at least in the baseline proposal. And then we send people to the role of representing our values on the basis of thinking they understand and will stand for our values, but they don't stand for expertise on the facts. <laughs> it's a separate role for that. So I would say the key thing is, can we separate these two roles? Hmm. Can we have one role for the people who, whose values we think, you know, we trust that they will represent our values and another role for the people who will be the most informed about the facts mm -hmm. and reward them separately for these two separate roles and then combine the fact estimates that one group gets with the value estimate the other group gets to make decisions together. That is the ideal way to solve this problem. How true is the statement power corrupts in that 